We are currently in the midst of the Double Double Review. For so, heroes. by a stroke of accident, Moby One, the tank on the blue team, as well as Moxdash, the captain of the red team, asked me to review the same series of games. So, here we are. Whoops. That was a mistake. I can eliminate it to either screen with those keys. That's cool. Anyways, so if we're talking about drafts, I, I could look up one of the POV streams to talk about those, but if we look at the finished products, I think the blue side team is far closer to, shall we say, current NGS meta, but the red side team I like a little bit better for this level. It has good shrine control. It'll be able to burn monkeys really fast. It'll be able to clear. And it'll be able to team fight. The only point of failure on this team is May getting front to back blown up. Anyways, let's begin. For both of these folks, I do need to address their specific concerns. So I'll have that. Five. Around a bit. Let me see here. Let the battle begin. Engagement is the focus of the blue team. Wait, no, that's the focus of the red team. Uh, I can see why it's a problem, especially with me. Overwhelming infliction. Percent damage still is going to be interesting. I see arguments either way, but Squirrel, the Silver God, is curious for Now. The move here by the Jaina is pretty smart. Just go for the wave, get the clear going. I'd like to see this trio right here doing the exact same thing. The May is dominating this space correctly, looking to build priority. So's Dire Pants and Captain. What I don't like to see is the Varian jumping in here. I don't like to see Moby Wan going in here. Your pick tank. Your ability to dominate space on Varian Pre-4 is non-existent. And that lineup contains a lot of spell damage you can't mitigate right now. So, the right play is Captain, Dire Pants, step up. Varian, look to block slash side lane. Sylve, look to do a damage and punish May for stepping up. Born, absolutely, should be constantly watching this May and looking for the opportunity to throw down the silence and make the maze job really hard after that. But Moby One gets punished for it, dies for it, but the red team doesn't build priority on it. So this is kind of an even trade, honestly. Neither team really builds an advantage from here. One of the things we should see due to this difference of Gazlo versus Leoric is Leoric absolutely should be taking opportunities like this, just going down and letting the rest of the blue side team create an advantage. Gossamer is looking to stall, but not very effectively. Let's actually just back that up a few seconds. So, let's take a look at the play. Moving in here. You already want to be stepping into this bush while the enemy team tanks is dead. There's no reason for you to be on the side lane. You're May. Your ability to catch people isn't that great anyways. So you just sort of step into this bush. Put down a blizzard here and make their lives rotating in between the lanes miserable. If you do that, this the fact that the Leoric isn't coming down to go for the soak immediately gets punished. Lockstash is on the camp promptly, and Arrest is on the camp promptly. It's only 10 minutes, 10 seconds after. It's perfectly acceptable to be playing the way they are. Gossamer and Moby One, they're both anchoring the way they should, but this is to aggro on Moby One. My opinion. There's no real reason to step up and... Because you're... You're very... Your ability to invade is non-existent. Dire Pants, finally rotating. Moby Wan, you should be looking to play for this camp immediately after. If you have an offlaner that can build priority, you can take a 5v4 fight here and create a serious problem. Gossamer, anchoring correctly. Escaping correctly, controlling the point correctly. Soup Kitchen walks in a little bit far forward. Really... They, the red side team, should try to control this space here. And they absolutely should 
be able to take this camp pre-4. Pre now the big advantage is gone. Now Gossamer is pickable. And it's going to be some of this shit. Looks like Taunt comes out a bit late. Or a bit early, depending on how you want to look at it. But you can see the priority of the Mark is being built. At Darren lies the problem, though. Exponent is... Having a hard time now being forced to double soak. Leoric is going to be able to do that better. And Raynor is definitely going... I, I think Raynor should have already cleared out this camp, moved on, and given Gazlo freedom. Because this is going to be missed soak. This is going to be chip damage taken here. It's just the limitations of the comp. Oh, this is... Way too far for what you want to do with May. Major limitation on May is the fact that her hard CC, her hard engaged tools, those come out of 10. Her wall is really good for that, but if you want to do a combo that actually kills someone, it has to be WE in a raw lane. Other than that, you want to look for point control, and you want to use it as a tacit or force wall. So let someone to go through, and then cut the gate, close the gate behind them, cutting them off from their team. So, Shrines, May is fine. This kind of open fight is not what you're looking for. And it's not worth it, period. Your team shouldn't be following you up on those. Neither. Scamps are getting done. Gul'dan's kind of important for this, but sticking around to go for the soak and getting the advantage is good. I don't like this clear, though. It, it should have just been QQ, leave. Lane's over. Because now, now the blue team has gotten some free time to set up. Gazlo hasn't been able to set up. And now you have a defensive tank that has to move offensively to take control of the space. Moving on to the fountain. That's fine. This is fine as well. But, again, it's a defensive tool rather than an offensive tool. Stepping up into the Varian. That's fine. Making it hard for him to punish as he's on the flank here. So... This is actually is good for Moby One because I can point out his mistake here. So let's play it back. This is a good flank. I mean, it's visible. It's obvious if you're looking at it from his perspective. But like, and obviously, you go through the went lane. But here's the thing: Gossamer steps up, presses E. You don't go on him. You move here. You use for Mockstack and Exorcist. They're hanging. You can. Charge onto them, catch them in the taunt, have born, have NRS to follow up. Capital can rotate around the other way if they want to. Dire Pants can do the same thing. And you can cast one of these DPS out and you can burn soup kitchens, resources, whatever they are. It's pole, it's whatever. The May doesn't have hard CC. CC. And a lot of tanks are like this, Joe being one of the obvious ones. And you just push past them. Front to back doesn't mean you prioritize the tank. It means you prioritize whatever your teammates can hit first. If that happens to be an exposed DPS, you kill that DPS and you move on. Yes, this comp is good at punishing Mei, but if Mei isn't in front of the DPS at the moment where you activate Taunt, you can't do any damage to her. Remember, lethality is crowd control plus damage. You need both at the same time. <laughs> Nasty silence. Good use of dire pants. Step up's gonna be difficult. Absolutely aggro here. Obi Wan gets caught. And again, it feels like the big problem with Moby Wan's gameplay with the taunt is that he's just blasting it when his DPS aren't available to play. Because let's look here. I think in this case... You need to wait a few seconds. If I had to guess, and I think we can look at Jaina's cooldowns here. Blizzard... It's gonna come up eventually. Hmm... Hmm... Blizzard is up here. Okay, that's interesting. I would say that's less the problem than of... Yeah, it's, it's not a timing issue. It's a position issue. It's just simply that the Jane is too far back. DPS aren't clumped with. 
and Arrest is moving around. This guy's potentially pickable. But not from that position. A little bit too far forward. Last couple was right in. Pushed out. <coughs> you also on HP. Maybe one steps up. One more is grabbed. Another is grabbed. And it goes to the blue team. Mox Dash is caught off guard. But Janet isn't quite there because they're catching so. That's weird. I don't like that as a macro decision. I think it absolutely should be, in this case, Dire Pants just immediately rotating to it and the DPS making value. Between Mox Dash and, Zek and the Gul'dan, this should be cleared out really quickly. Actually, I should probably rewatch that fight from Gossamer's perspective as well. Because I was getting into Moby Ones. Yep, we're going to do that. This Immortal Phase isn't important. So let's see it from their perspective instead. I'm going to have to do this a double-double. Okay, that's the initial. We can go past this. We've already seen that. Right around to the point where I started hyperfixating on Moby One. That would be right here. So Gossamer has the W. But this isn't great because there isn't much control. I don't like that W right there. You want to put it in here and prevent that collapse. So, we can rewatch it again. You sort of see the problem from Gossamer's perspective. He has his D, he has his escape tools, but when this is placed down here, he gives Anaressa, Dire Pants, and Born the chance to move in here. This entire massive amount of damage, massive amount of healer burn that happens here can't happen if this thing is moved to cut the gate. You need to use it as a zoning tool because it fundamentally is a zoning tool. If there's pathing that's left, there's pathing that'll be used. The other thing that's important to note, and I think we can look at it right now, this one. I don't like this blizzard. This seems reactive. It seems like it's based on the people there. And, you know, they just come back in a few seconds and they get it. You are only capable of using it for so long, just firing it out there, it's only a disengaged tool when you fire it out that way. You want it to be a counter-engaged tool. You want it to be used to take the immediate motion and then mess it up. <sighs> okay, very funny meme, Tiger. Thank you. Anyways, where's my brain going? Oh, yeah. Right, 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 right. I had a thought about this. So, if you use your crowd control to catch the enemy as they engage, you can simultaneously turn their own engage off while turning your own engage on. You manage to get effectively twice the value of your opponents. So, if this blizzard is, say, weighted... Let's see here. This is when it's used, if I'm not mistaken. Like, right here, it gets used. Yeah, they're going to get a few more here. That's basically guaranteed. But if it's held to block this spot off, a few more seconds, there's a chance, albeit small, that your team can burn down those last few. As it is, though. Only one death has happened. Pretty big. Yeah, let's speed up through this Punisher. I've mentioned my dislike for the immediate macro decisions. Anaressa doing what Anaressa does is fine here. Oh, there's actually something I can say about Moby Wan's decision making here. I don't like this direct push. You have Sylph. You have Varian. You have two tools that are capable of tower diving. Varian with his parry in. And Sylvanas with the tower turnoff. Rotate around. Catch them off, cut off their retreat, and make this fort extremely uncomfortable to defend. You already have a massive wave. It looks like it's going to be able to take these towers on really easily. So why not just continue to push and pressure? Why not take around, get a pick, and surprise them? You have the tools to do it. That 
That's absolutely something they can do. And Gossamer right now is basically a sitting duck. The other thing that I think I'm kind of annoyed at, uh, Moby One, this is for you. You should have mounted up the moment the gate was down. And you should have looked to pressure and harass them past that. The Punisher gives you your damage. You can pressure them out that way. Fort falls, that's to be expected. And now the map is cut in half for Moxash's team. Immediate response. Let's see here, what are the resources like? You know what? I think this camp is a viable play for the blue team on this situation. Like you can actually step up, control the space. You have a tank that is objectively stronger. If I'm not mistaken, the way Varian's HP increase works is it's a one-time thing. Like, it's a 40% bonus, but that 40% bonus is not cumulative with any increases after that, which means your HP constantly is falling off with each level relative to other tanks. So when you have Varian, you want to do it hard. You, you want to hit hard. You, you want to go as strong as you can in those early levels. Plus, I, I think this is free. Like, if there's nobody anchoring this, if Gossamer's not available, you can absolutely take that. This is a snappy pick. But, Moby wants you to be in that bush. Good combination. It should result in Gossamer just dying. That's one of the biggest problems. Uh, that's unfortunate. One of the biggest problems with May is the fact that any sort of stationary CC, it'll still be there even after your stuff ends. Anyways. I think that was a savable death, but it's a really unfortunate one. Actually, while we're at it, let's take a peek at the builds as well. Crystallize, heat transfer, induce hibernate. Uh, okay. Okay. I'm going to have to teach you the ways of the cursed powers, Gossamer. But we'll talk about that later. And Aressa takes a lot of damage. Moby One goes in for the peel. It's all well and good, but I think Moby One could have been pottering a bit harder earlier on. Dang it, that's not far back enough. Let's see here. Moby One has a lot of HP. Really hesitating on the mount, those mounts. Like, if you don't have anything that's going to stop you from mounting, mount up. It pays off after three seconds. Hmm. Captain, looks like they were recovering. I don't know why they weren't there to begin with. It's weird. Just sort of inefficient moment. But the people fighting from the gates absolutely could be punished here if they're not careful. Speed this up. Once again, I'm... yeah, that's to be expected. Red side team picks it up, especially because of the lack of double soak. Hmm. I think this is far more about the Rainer not going in, not coming back, and it's just sort of being a four man fight. Gul'dan's a perfectly suitable anchor here. Gul'dan can probably solo clear this camp with maybe giving up the tower as well. Having the DPS death ball is one of those things that can cause a huge loss. Ultimates, they're all fine. Except for making maybe horrify. Big problem with this is gonna be that... Okay. Real talk though. There's nothing stopping Gossamer from holding the abilities there. Good positioning on Moby Wan's side. R real talk, though. You don't want to use your CC abilities as wave clear if there's somebody else to do the wave clear for you. And... Uh, uh, no, 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 no. This is not good. This could result in a pick. This could go so south. Goodbye, exponent. 
Bye. Your tank has abandoned you. Your healer refuses to heal. Uh oh. That's not great. Captains isolated out, but there isn't really anything there to punish them. Yeah, that's really profoundly bad in terms of the sheer number of ults that you're used. Camp call's fine. They'll need the gals to come back anyways. Stepping into the wave and clearing it. Eh, it's probably fine in this case. But the biggest problem with the build... Eh, yeah, it's Slush Ball. I, I think Crystallize is silly here. Well, it's silly whenever you're not actually... doing tank duty. Because if you are actually weave clearing, you need the extra damage from Slush Ball, or you need the extra damage from Ice Storm. One or the other. It doesn't matter. Uh... Wait. Okay. Uh, we're gonna have to look at this play again, because this confuses me. Exponent goes in, catches Basok. I'm guessing the Entomb catches him. Wait. Hold on a second. Hold on. Let me see this. Nasty. That's nasty. And that, my friends, is why you always control the bushes that are nearby. Whether it's this one or whatever. Because you're going to get entombed, probably. Or just outright blown up, holy crap. This wave doesn't need to be soaked right now. Honestly, Gossamer kind of wants to be standing here slash here or just pressing patrol. The Gazlo kind of wants to be pushing with. It's an incredibly risky land. Is... Oh, no. Oh, no. Light bombs forced out. Okay, I really think this Anduin needs to work on their choices of when to use Light Bomb, and when to use Pull. It's all about fungibility. You can always use Pull, again, as an escape tool. Whenever you have it, it's always good for that, but it's only good for that. You may be able to use Light Bomb to peel in this case, and okay, okay, you saved the Gul'dan's life, perhaps, but now you can't engage. Like, you're down an alt. You're down that tool. Next fight's going to be so much harder. They left objective. Interesting. Anyways, 13s are coming out. Uh-oh. So, you know that thing? Crystallized? Yeah, it's not useful anymore. Because Moby One can break it. Ooh, nice fear. Captain should absolutely drop here, but... damage. Okay. So, let's rewind. Is it simultaneous? It looks simultaneous. Step in. They take the control. It's a 4v4 fight. Yeah, it's about simultaneous, which is unfortunate. So, you know what you do right now? You ice wall and you cut this. They've been feared in two places. You can use Ice Wall not just simply as a stasis tool, but as a terrain tool. So, cut it out. Try to prevent as much intervention coming from these two as you can. There's something you can do to stop Captain from bopping the heal. That's going to happen. But you can probably keep these two further away and just simply hitting them with stasis. Or if you catch them over here, it's even better. Now the fight just collapses. Okay. Because... Yeah, it becomes a 5v4. That's unfortunate. Kind of predictable. The Gazlo over-prioritizes Soak. Probably should be here. Hasn't cast an ultimate in about three minutes. Which is really unfortunate. Oh, bah, 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 bah. 
It means that the combination here between Entomb and Silence Circle is going to be really nasty. And let's see here. Anduin has used pull this time. That's good. But, yeah. Feels pretty nasty. Gossamer. Hmm. Okay, I need to see that in more detail. Where are you? Ah, uh, number six. Let's see here. It's down. But there's very little you can actually do. And I think this is going to result in a div. No, it doesn't result in a div gossamer. But I think it should. Blizzard gets held for way too long. I think if you just, again, close the gate here, you can at least keep Stukov off. I don't know about the rest. But he's on that list. So. You can also keep Moby One out. And his damage. Hmm. Okay, a bit of feedback from Moby One's team here. You are going to be fighting 13v13 here, no matter what you do. Jane is dead. You can just take these two camps, uh, pre-cap that one, 39 this, wait for Jane to get back, maybe clear up this wave, push towards 16, and then use Leo to Q as a sort of guaranteed Q on this. Whenever. Like, you have Leo. They don't have that many points. This is yours. But you don't have to take it immediately. Knowing when to 39, when you can build a bigger advantage before the objective starts rolling, is also absolutely crucial for getting this map to go in motion. Because there's a lot more that you could set up before this. I like the flank around this time. It absolutely should be punishable. But... Going deeper. And exponent's dead. Wait. Oh no! Oh no! Where's the follow through? Ah. I'm so angry I went French! No oh, exponent. He's going out, getting a risky soak. That's probably fine. Gothamer loses a lot there. But. Tanking's all right. Let's see here. This is flurry build. Oh. Oh, good grief. Hmm. Hmm. What the roster? I think I know the names. I can probably figure things out. Uh, wait, what's the Gul'dan build? Okay. Corruptibles. It's lots of health funnel stuff. Okay, that's weird. Not sure if I like that. But yeah, now the blue team can get an advantage. It's not out. It's totally out, but protest a change. But the, the blue team's doing just fine, but the red team needs to, 30 seconds ago, walk through here. Avoid getting spotted by a wave. See if you can poke one of these bushes without Moby One seeing. And then try to blow the ba black li back line up. Mm, not sure about that one. As a W, but it probably doesn't matter actually. Whatever. Let's speed this up for the next time. And this team has a chance. That's when both teams are 16. As long as there isn't a fight before then, life should be good. Gossamer's doing decent anchoring. Scouting with Q's fine. Uh oh. Let's see here. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, 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 no.
I mucked up the buttons there. This one's going to be important. So let's see here. Anchoring bush in question. That's fine. But not mounting up is not fine. You see them coming in advance. Captain gets a flank. Does good damage onto Dire Pants. In fact, Dire Pants dies. Light Bomb's fine. Moby One gets split. Hmm, and that's... Quote, unquote, main tank Jaina build. Yeah, it was a good pick. How do you make that fight better? Because a lot of stuff happens that's weird. Hmm. One of the things that I think could have changed with this, if you were the blue team, is you have two points of first contact. You have the Leoric, you have the Varian. They should be screening separate bushes. They should be going in and looking to be a point of first contact, a point of engagement from both angles. The Jaina had the right idea here, moving to the flank, but the Leoric should accompany them. Or the Varian. In fact, I think it probably should be the Varian and the Leoric checks the main bush. Because the Varian can do a lot of damage to the May. The May, I think, wants to watch a bush like this one and have the Gazlo maybe put a few turrets here. Like, you kind of want to look for a choke point that you can actually have your teammates follow through with. So, here is too far out if you're going on the camp. Here is more likely to be meaningful. You have a Gazlo, <coughs> so you don't really have a second point of contact, but you can put turrets here to see a flank coming and at least get out of dodge from that. But that pick does make a huge difference. Could allow for a decent comeback. Especially with this Rainer build. Of course, you had the weird level one for May slash ball. You probably push a little bit further. Honestly, this push is done now. You probably want to go and catch the other two lanes and slow this gap down. Because this is going to start chipping. This is going to start chipping. Both of these are going to get reinforcements before then. This level advantage is still significant. This is so weird. This is so weird and I don't know what to think about it. You're giving up the four possible choke points that the Gazlo and the May can exploit. You're cutting off your own retreat. Two of you are getting caught in. Oh, no. No, don't do that. Oh, no. How did nobody die with those two? What? Okay, let me see here. Mustache runs away. The Gazlo dies. Soup Kitchen's probably next. Fear comes out. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Every possible advantage got given up. Like, not only are you giving up the choke points, not only are you giving up access to retreat, you're also giving up vision. Like, let me see here. You see Moby Wands coming. This is fine positioning, but let, let's watch it from their per point of view here. You see Dire Pants coming through the lane. But for a few seconds here, you lose the fact that he's there. And then whammo! Like, vision is important. If you don't know an ability is coming, it's entirely on your reflexes. And some things like in Tomb, that doesn't matter because it's practically instant. So here you just... Gah! Giving up Vision 2 is really sad. And if Born and Anaressa were a little bit closer, I think these two just outright die. Because nothing gets cast, no fly bombs, no nothing. But the immediate result, Moxdash is right to chase down the captain here. But 
doesn't have enough damage because it's Rainer. The kill on Marcus Exorcist goes down next. No? Okay, not quite enough damage. Yeah. Oh. Now there's no Gazlo, which means that one less stun that's available. And once again, the defensive position is lost. I like that counter engage right there on the case of Dire Pants. That's good. And Dire Pants is really just reducing the damage numbers intensely with that Leo build. That's pretty good, actually. That's a pointless blizzard right there. It's not a combo, and it's not a control. But stepping up right now is what I think is best described as the height of lunacy on this case of Gossamer. I think you will be able to get the Gazlo on time easily. You wait for five, you go back in when it's 25 monkeys V10. Because, you know, another Entomb is already active. The healer's too far. Wait, no, but Gossamer's just too far out with no follow-up. Because, really, the Gazlo is what extends this kill combo makes it more dangerous. And, and now, yeah. Yeah. Anyways. Let's change the perspectives again. And let's watch it from the blue team's perspective. That's about here, right? A fort. So, if you're the blue team, how do you posture? Well... You do show on the waves, they know. You're Moby One. Cry as you. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Moby One. I'm not mad, but you had a banner to place down there. You need to use that snappy. Wait, it's not just the banner in it. It's also this. So that gets activated. That should be down. The banner should already be up, down the moment the entomb gets dropped. Heck! Screw! It being dropped the moment the tomb is in, the banner should be used to face check the bush here. Like, if you can catch them out, combo them, follow it up, easy mode. That way you don't get caught personally. You can use it as a scouting tool in this case. And, you know, obviously I think you want Shattering Throw on quick casts. You just want to throw it out here, completely eliminate May's chances of survival. Not press taunt there. But kill potential happens. It's good. The miracle soup gets him lives as long as he does, though. Yeah, the banner is held way too long after the burst. Which I think is the number one problem. Like it is by far Varian's biggest power spike. Beyond taunt. It's the only thing that really carries Varian into the late game. Actually, speaking of Varian builds, I kind of forgot about this. Let's see here. Victory Rush. Taunt. Overpower is wrong here, but that's the classic taunt. You want to actually take the Q talent into here because there's blinds at play. So far, the May builds... Eh. We can talk about that one later. But the direct results of this is that nothing actually dies. Soup Kitchen manages to heal everyone back up. And Moby One could have fundamentally changed that just by changing his priority usage with abilities. There could be multiple people dead. And honestly, at this point, it's a difficult thing to say because Exponent kind of needs to defend this, but... This is the last chance to take a free 20 fight, and a good team will be able to close it out. The other... Actually, kind of think about it. When did May get her ice wall back? Because maybe there were several opportunities to use it as well that I haven't thought about. 
I mean, yeah, of course, there's been some fights here. This is a really weird ice wall. Oh, well. That's something that we can work on later, I think. Mock dash. Yeah, that's sort of what you'd expect. Oof. That's why they don't go face checking bushes. Again, I think the opportunity to 39 it is on the side of the blue team here. You need the hearth anyways. You're so close to 20. There are camps to be taken. Just hold off on it a little while longer. Because the advantages you can build are greater than the kills you for death timers you receive. They're really short anyways for a late game objective. Let's see here. Push is fine. Oh, wait. I should be on everyone. Oh! This would be such a good... This would be such a good combo. If either of these two were here. Oh, no! Oh, that one's not your fault, Gossamer. Kind of is, though, for popping it while you don't have DPS, though. So, yeah, that's tragic. What are you doing on the side of the blue team? Eking out more of an advantage? That's cool. Frankly! Let's see here. Did Leo take Buried Alive? Yes, he did. You can get away with not taking Buried Alive with the Stukov combo. Just because it, you know, decreases the duration. I think the right call here... Is the five man push down a key while well, you have 20? You have Sylph, you have Varian, you have all the tools you need to just overwhelm a fort. Of course, with Janna not here, this could easily end up being a game thrower. There it is. Two is late forward. Ugh. Okay. Too much offensive May. Another really weird disengaged life bomb that I do not like. And yeah, that, that's game. Fine. All right? Wait, what? This is BM. You got three kills, you have enough. Okay, now? me okay whatever floats your boat Let's see what are the, the 20s not even take this game's over yeah okay mm. Alright, we're back into Typing Simulator stream. Okay, let's just... Get on to game number two. Which I'll be able to download right now. Wait, actually, how can I do this? Alright, let's see here. What does that do? Bothers the game just a bit. Right, let's get on in. Okay, fine. You're going to be like that. Fine, fine. That's Tower of Doom game. That's... Interesting. Hmm. All right. In we go again.
Come on, here's the storm. Please respond. Yay. There we go. Game number two. Let's do this. Okay. Hmm. Neither team could win this one with these comps. All right, let's actually go back to default study Battle to show them. Heroes. Let's see here. Conventional variant builds fine, especially with overpower. Completely reasonable. Mock stash continues with shenanigans. Jim Laner is definitely something. Battle begins in ten seconds. I would like to see Mock Stash grow out of, but you know. Five, four, three, two, one. Exponent absolutely should be doubling in these lanes. The should be able to beat out the Sonya pretty convincingly. Okay, Born, you're just extra. Exponent, I don't appreciate you doing that. Your team consists of multiple bogeys who can do AoE damage. Body blocking the wave so it doesn't clump is a mistake. Beyond that, blue team should be playing very cat passive. They've got a Varian. In fact, the Sonya being there is right, but what if you just left the captain here to clear and you sent Anaressa and Moby One to cheese out topside. It's not normally the lane that matters on this map, but every bit of a early XP matters. Again, Gossamer, you could mount up there. Kind of a missed opportunity. And one of the things I think that's important with the new Burrow Charge is an ability that obviously you don't want to use it as the engaging tool every time. There are some comps in which it'll absolutely get you killed. But when the lineup's Sylv, Chromie, 75% minimum spell damage, and you have a certain talent, go nuts. Be aggressive. This composition is the perfect scenario for you to be incredibly aggressive Look for zany flanks. Call them out for your team. Have Exorcist. Follow up with the E. Have Sycopans follow up with his WE combo. And you can kill anything on this team. Or at least force Born to use a leap. For that matter, Moby One and crew should be playing scared right now. If anything, Moby One shouldn't even be here because he's not even a tank. He should be looking for Soak, looking to help Dive Pants take a camp and build lane priority. Now, there it goes again. Like, <sighs> I think for one, Moby One should absolutely be here, should absolutely be screaming against this team. And the red side should be like sharks smelling blood in the water. All there is here is, you know, DPS that can't kill your tank while you have stronger point control and lots of damage. There is no tank on the enemy's side of the team. You should be out for blood here, Gossamer. And Moby One, you should be doing everything you can to make sure he's up there. But now this camp comes out late, and it's probably going to give Red Side the chance to just escort these in. It's a lot of damage to lose. It's a bro charge using an escape tool. And 
bit late on that map. But look at all that chip done just because the camp was done late. That's really unfortunate. Like, minute one, you should be grabbing that thing and blasting it in. And right now, you're just playing way too cautious. You're... And this, better barbs, like... What? You should be going for Under King. You should be diving into this lineup because they can't kill you. Even now. Okay. Uh. Da 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 da. This is a mistake. This is a mistake. Can you catch the mistake? Also, good engage, Moby One. So. Who. On this team, can you stop from unleashing their combos? It's not Varian. He's already pressed his buttons. It's Anaressa. You should be looking to step up, catch Basilv, stop her from doing damage. Going in just guarantees that, look at that, you eat the chromie damage. Exorcist still takes the damage, all of it. And Sylv gets the kill. Like, that is exactly how I expected that to go down. Actually, I didn't expect the KT to die there, but eh, whatever. Details. The point simply being, when you're a tank and you have crowd control, there is only one time where you crowd control tanks or mages. When they haven't used their abilities yet. It's two samurais about to draw swords and cut each other to ribbons. Whoever cuts first is obviously going to be at an advantage in these kinds of scenarios. But when you're the guy who takes the first blow, if you're still standing after that, you go for the DPS, you go for the marksmen, the... People who do damage over a longer period of time. Because you can always stop those guys. And they're generally squishy. You can generally punish them pretty hard. But that's a whole lot of HP that was lost. That's a Kale Thoth that was lost. When, honestly, yeah, you know, you can avoid it. Honestly, it, it does feel like they're playing punch drunk on the red side here. The Varian compositions are simplicity in and of themselves. And the biggest problem, and I think this is really obvious to anybody who knows how to deal with variant comp, is the choice of healers in handling them. Anduin and Stukov. A long cooldown invasive cleanse. That's great in anti deplacement, but less so in point of click CC like what Varian has. And a healer that doesn't even have a cleanse at all, which is Stukov. So Moby One will be able to get the full value out of his champion here. Go no matter where he goes. Uh, and this is something else that I think I need to repeat to Mock Stash. Do not draft their freaking... God dang Rainer as your solo marksman. The flex pick, this for utility. This composition is frustratingly wrong because Zorcist can't really close out the kills on their own, which means that Moxdash can't really leave to get value elsewhere, to make Dire Pants' life difficult, to Icrip exponent to take camps and put pressure. I would much rather see on Zorcist some kind of mage that he is good enough at to single-handedly kill whoever Gossamer catches out. Whether it's Li Ming or Health. Could be fucking Nova, I don't really care. The big problem with these drafts so far is the fact that Raynor is being used as a DPS when it should be a flex pick. And this, whatever the fuck this shit is, this is not a hyper carry. It's not something that'll win the team fight on its own. And Psychopants thus far 
hasn't shown the ability to pick up the damage on either of them. There's no trio of heroes that can actually directly win out a fight. Or just simply stalemate a 3v4. And that's a problem. And that's dead. Kale Foss. No? Ah, uh, no. Anessa uh, chipped a bit. The biggest problem thus far is the fact that Gosslimer is just losing all of his HP while his shield is down. Like, if that shield is being used to mitigate damage appropriately as part of the engage... Okay, the, the biggest issue is the fact that the engage is control. And so much of what's wrong on the red team is just pure and simple positional stuff. Like, it's just the fact that the DPS aren't capable of aligning with each other. So, if we give the example that we did with Moby Wan about the fact that he's taunting the May instead of taunting the hanging DPS on that shrine. Went over that a while ago. The same problem is endemic on the red team. Moby Wan scuts it out, takes control of the bush. Gosper face checks it, but gauges that when necessary. One of the things I'd like to see is Gossamer using this little bit of vision control, bro charge on one of these DPS, call it out a few seconds later, have the DPS play in, collapse, get damage, try to get a kill, get out. And the big problem is there's just a whole bunch of oscillation, and that's not great. Once again, you have 65% spell armor, and you're face checking a bush without it. Like, every time you think you could be in danger, every time you're doing a dangerous action, you, you're wide open. I mean, don't get me wrong, I recently face-checked a bush that had a Junkrat mime in it. Then Porky hooked me over a wall, put, put, him, put me in his belly, and then put me in a fort where I died, and that basically cost us the game so it happens at all levels but it yeah work on that danger sense you need to become the spider-man and once again the camps are being taken way too late okay could you have saved that let's see here answer yes could have. So, knowing what range these things aggro and go suicide bomb me is another thing that's important. Because you could have just dropped the impale, stop that, and that's uh, about 2,000 damage that you're up on that fort. You can't sort of peel on a tank, but some of you guys punish it really well, actually, and do a lot of damage. It, it sort of unbelies the fact. Look at how you led that one. A and it should be obvious. Oh, come on! Really? Captain! You only take slowing sands when there's a cleanse involved. Right now, if you took time loop, you could time loop anybody. Ah! That, that, that's a random bit of pet peeve, but... See this? It's just like bonk. Wait, where's Kalefoss's stun and all of that? Did I just miss it repeatedly? But yeah, it's like it's really good, and it does a lot. CC doesn't come out at the same time, though. Which is kind of what. Set. Oh, nice save on the Silvs part. Damage is good. Exponent. Actually, these numbers are really even in terms of offlaners for the most part. Actually, exponents lost a lot of soak due to the death. That's not good. 
Like, you have a rainer that should be catching it, no? But they're not. Let the grave keepers cronies reach the old and the point you. just gets lost because of total lack of control. Sega Pants gets caught by the Varian. Yeah, that's really unfortunate. And like, that obviously was a point that could have been played for, but it's the kind of decision making error that's solvable. Basically, you elect whoever you really need to send, whoever the replaceable part is. That is your flex, the one that's interchangeable, not necessarily needed for the three-mana fight. That's the one that you allow to break out of the line, then break into the line. Basically, just send a send the one man up to do the one man's job. Send the three man up to do the three man's job here, which is stall this out, take control, and this is just reckless. There's no point in being that far out. Your team won't ever be able to get in range there. I mean, look at this. I think the big problem is the vision control. Like, your location is playing as day. You're engaging from places that are oftentimes far away from your team, yet simultaneously, really obvious to the enemy team. Use this bush, use the flank, use this area and this one as well. Like, there are more to this, there's more to this environment than just standing in the lane and going in for deep flanking doesn't work. And that's dead mock stash. Yeah. Okay, if I. If I see another Pyroblast kill, I'm gonna lose my mind. I hate that ultimate so much. Okay, this is... <sighs> oh, no! Now, the build's fine, for the most part. I changed better barbs out for Underking. Then there's this shit. <sighs> Fudge! No! Cocoon would have been so great in this one. Ah no! Wait, you remove Moby One from play. You remove Dire Pants from play, and then you go on the back line. Okay, that was really good. And yes, Locust Swarm did provide value there, but shut up. Y you could have gone Cocoon and gone on and arrested their captain instead. Ah. So, what's the play here? Take that camp. They're down a tank. You can absolutely play for the advantage. You can play to push things out here. And you get to it? You get to it. A little bit slower. Mockstash is the one who should be on it. Please tell me you don't trade points here. No. Okay. Trade points here. No. Right play, wrong by 20 seconds. One of the important things to note about kills is kills are temporary. They happen, then they're gone. Then whatever advantage you had is back to zero, and the game resumes. The first thought, whenever you get an advantage, should be, how do we turn this advantage into something that will matter 10 minutes down the line? How do we make this game harder for the opponents the next time they're alive again. It's a really important mentality to get in. <sighs> but it looks like there's going to be a little bit of mis-soak. And it looks like the invade just sort of becomes impossible. Like, you've got two kills. But the situation is even at best. So... How I'd handle this is a constant monitoring. So, you send Mockstash Sickle Pants to this. You have the Leoric channel. You, as Gossamer, when you see them here, you stall them out, and you move with Zorcist. That's the implementation. That's how you re reallocate resources. 
Micro calling is far more about right person, right place, right time. It's not about kill this person. It's about making sure that your team could kill that person to begin with. There are people who can direct the flow of combat in real time, and those people are great. They don't exist outside of CCL, Storm Division, and maybe Heroic. Sometimes Nexus. Like, the best you can do is good resource management. And... That didn't happen here. It's two kills up, but still the exact same stalemate. Except your poor has less health, so play that game of chicken, you're gonna lose. Okay. That's better. Stepping up like that, so is good. Uh, problem is perhaps you're open DPS. Perhaps it's you not being able to recognize when the variant is going to charge. Because if you can get that moment, two seconds in the future, lay down your impale in the path of the variant, follow up with the charge... Zorcist follows up with his stun. Psychopants follows up with his not root combo. I don't know what it is. It, it actually is not the root combo. Okay, cool. You can kill him there. You're looking for the counter engage. So you don't want in this situation to look for the moment where you can engage. You want to look for the moment where Moby One wants to engage. So, step up here, step up here. You see him going in here. And that's a good move on Moby One's part. He doubles back. He makes it really unpredictable when he's actually going to get in. He's doing good work in this engage. But it's still possible to trace a line. Hit the impale and then punish him first. But in lieu of that, going on Anaressa was the right call. I hate this fire blast so much. I hate this so much. It doesn't do anything. Goodbye, gate. Goodbye, pumpkins. Should I watch that one in the perspective of Moby One? I don't know. I'm sure there's something that you could get out of it. Uh, that's... Anyway, I don't know. Take the altars and put an end to the great Exponents moving in, being very aggressive. The adaptation by Moby One of his 13 is absolutely right. That's disgusting. That's disgusting. Oh my word. Ugh. Good follow through. The control Moby One's gonna out of his feet here. And that's an offlane trade. But yeah. Now, oh, Mox Dash, what have we said about using your Hyperion? Use it to create a tangible advantage. No. <sighs> okay, this is weird on so many levels. Let's see here. Obi Wan's too far away from his team to get HP. Face checks and gets wrecked. I mean, look at the difference between the amount of damage you take while the shield's up versus when it's not. Light and day. Light and day, Gossamer. Although, real talk, I think Moby Wan. Definitely, you're going to need to learn when to call it quits.
the inevitable result of that particular outcome, that fight, was that Leoric would respawn before Sonya, it would become a 5v4, and then with your HP, the fight was untenable. Knowing when to retreat, fundamentally and change a game, because yes, the gap is closing now, but this gives the red team, Moxash's team, way more time to just set up, take control, and potentially look for an invade that works this time. Whenever... Part of knowing how to play from behind is knowing when to cut your losses and when to stop the bleeding. Because a lot of the games that get lost from wall ahead, you take a temporary loss for a few seconds, then you take another one, and then, yeah, it's basically over. From this point on, I think, though, with... Uh, what are those talents? Number two, or is it number one? Number one, yes. From now on, Mortal Strike. It's a little spookier. Honestly, I'm still torn on the Mortal Strike, actually. It's... Generally good here, especially in a little Leoric and the Stukov, but uh, removing that big spell shield might be for the better. But again, you, you can see it in the team. Just send Mockstash up to clear the wave and have the three man do the three man's job. This camp got no value, and now this is still a stalemate. Yes, there's up XP, partially because of those four man rotations. But if you want to be really efficient about it, put Moxstash on Fallstat, have Moxstash roam around bot side, go in to help Exponent on these camps, and Z back down to take a fight. So you don't even need to have her join right at the nick of time. All you need to do is have her recall 10 seconds before the fight starts, and you can build an advantage. But you can still... Oh, bloody hell! Uh, that's a mistake on my part. I believe that I have used the wrong pronoun. Oh, well. <sighs> you make those kinds of mistakes on the internet all the time. It's they, not she. I have screwed up. No. 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 If I zero another Pyroblast, I will lose my mind. Oh my god. Anyways, speaking of which, I was losing my mind, so let's go back and try this again. So, 16 advantage. Blue team, especially Mobile One's team. They really want to play this slow, get the soak. Because right now, Dire Pants is having a hard time. So, send up... Anaressa, use Captain as the anchor, have Moby Wan provide screaming for or anchoring for, for Anaressa, and then just, you know, get 16, take a fight, win, use that. This, this follow-up is nasty. It's a deep engage, and with a different team comp, it absolutely could have worked. As it is, Moby Wan dies. And the exponent takes a fight and wins the fight. Okay, cool. But yeah, this, this could really turn south now. It's the kind of extended blood loss that causes a team that should nominally have an advantage to just outright lose it on this map. But, ah, uh, this rotation up. I don't like it. I really don't. Obviously, they're not going to be able to invade, but you could have taken control over this and started that downward spiral. Then look to take this camp in a minute. Then you have control. You're never going to get up there in time. And you're probably not going to need to do the same thing for Exponent, because they're not going to take a 3v5 for that point down 16. You use the Beatles for what they're good for, and you take control over this space. Unstoppable barrier, yeah, that's totally fine. Nice move on that part, but I don't know about this. I really don't. Please don't do boss. This was would be a horrible mistake they would throw. 
Camps are fine. Bit of preemptive anchoring on mock stashes. Park customers in the right bush. Good moves around on Moby One's part, but going any further is unlikely. Now, what you really want to do is have Exponent come down here, clear out the wave, build that priority. But again and again, I feel like there's a fundamental misunderstanding of the nature of this team comp that's costing the red side a lot. And that's just sending the Kale Foss, which is honestly better for killing and having Mox Dash rotate around. It should be Mox Dash on the side lane getting clear while the Kale Foss provides a threat. And honestly, right now, I feel like Moby Wan's team especially with Sonya, needs to hyper-aggro on and just find a way to kill Gothamer. They're down levels, but not necessarily down them in a way that matters. It's only like an 8% difference to HP and damage. So a 5v4 makes up for that just barely in terms of raw CC advantage. You can probably kill Gossamer if you leap, taunt, mind control, and wipe them out. It's the necessary play at this point, because once that 20 advantage hits, everything shunts into the favor of this red team. If they can turn that advantage into something tangible, it could just become a downward slide. Exponent is in the right place here. The he hit soak advantage is there. It's not going to get closed anytime soon. The advantage gets turned permanently. There absolutely could be a pick here if Intune was used on the Chromie. It's just it's a damn shame that it didn't happen. Like, Intune has been held really too much this game. I hate this. I hate this! If this works, I'm gonna cry. Dire Pass is now here, but it's way too late. And... Just the slight five before advantage has left Moby Wan's team in some pretty dire straits. Now the gap can begin to widen. Last good team fight opportunity is probably gone at this point. That's pretty nasty. Okay. Close to 20 on the side of Gossamer and Moxdash. They don't need this fight. They don't need these five extra points. You just need the ones here. And you need to play incredibly passive here if you really want to make the play. Not this far out. You just need to chill out for a bit. And not spoon feed the other team a whole three kills. Now that level advantage is for nothing. The altar is ours. And for what? A few points? It's like, no, no. Yeah, well, yeah, it's your bad, but the rest of your team should have let you die there, exponent. And now the point advantage is down. That's just not good. Respawns happen. Respawn goes where they need to go. Gets the chippy in. Please don't go here, Exorcist. You don't have an anchor yet? Oh, okay. Moby Wan. You know they're respawning. You really could have seized on this one if you were a little bit for far further forward. But you know what? Down 20. It, it, it's a really Borderline easy mistake to make. Dire Pants is here now. What are the what are we looking at for twenties? 
Rewind's good. Sergeant Pepper. No, 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 no. That's wrong. Whoa, that's weird. Flamethrower's fine. Bear life's fine. Top off. Fuck it. I guess it's fine. Basically, all of these are okay. Honest to God. It, this is still a... Rainer run it down build and whoa okay we're gonna have to back up a few seconds it's still a Rainer run it down build because you can now play more aggressively you can bait and become a lightning rod for the enemy team allow gossamer to follow up after your death and then win the team fight or you can actually get the unstoppable talent on Rainer and never be in danger of getting this. Because you just react to pop that as you get engaged. That itself could also be a turn. But not not this talent. This, this isn't a real talent. I'm sorry. Let's see here. What gets picked? This fight is really weird. This is how you want to take it. This is how you could get an advantage. Only one goes in. Goes the taunt. Dire pants. Holds the leap for way too long. Give Gossamer a chance to engage. Pyroblast is useless, because why wouldn't it be? That's too much. This entire fight was 5v4. Ah. Ah. Okay, so what do both teams do? Red team should be playing passive. They have the disadvantage. They should... Chill out while the York gets some value elsewhere. But holy crap, Moby Wan played it right, goes in for the fight. Dire Pants should have looked for the leap. You absolutely, absolutely can play this comp front to back. Anubarak, if CC'd, has half as much health as an Anubarak who isn't CC'd, thanks to the ridiculousness of his barrier. But hey, at least Exponent manages to sneak five points in, so the game technically isn't over. But if that's the situation, Moxdash should absolutely rotate topside here and look to create some split pressure. Right. This is going to be the point of first contact. You will die if you are here. Edge of safety. Such an edge of safety. I can literally feel the edge on my throat. And there's mind control, there's taunt, there's the dead... Yeah, it's like, yeah, that happens. It's gone. The new break just disappears. So that kind of caution is necessary. It's just brutal. And a lot of that comes to the fact that there are other options and other ways to play. Exponents producing good chip here. Perfectly reasonable to play it down here. That's AA build. Why? Those will get nice chippy. But fighting for this one is probably a mistake. Or the very least... Actually, you know what? Leo Arcs... It's fine to give them both up. They kind of have to be anyways because of the dead Anub. That pick was really well timed on the side of Moxdash. So the right play is to look for other value elsewhere. Or catch Moby one completely off guard if his team doesn't do anything. And a win. Born! You have two leaps! Uh, I'm very tilted about that. Moby One did not deserve to die right there. Healer diff, I guess. But, what do you do with that pick? I think. You look for another pick. You make sure that these actually get in. 
If you're Gossamer, you want to play from this area, right where Tinker Pants is, and you don't give the camp up. Go, 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 get go. Hello, sir. Would you like a comp? No, sir. I've already got one. Oh. <laughs> the loss. The opportunity. The potential for a surprise attack. And the... Fucking Pyroblast gets another kill. My mind is gone. Paying for it, me. Oh no. Oh no, 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 no. No, 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 no. It's a lot of damage. But should be workable. They both come up simultaneously. I'm guessing that the game ends here, judging by the. Yep. They get backdoor bossed. Absolutely sucks to be them. <sighs> That's why on this map, four is the magic number. If you are ever below four points, or you're ever about to be put below four points, that is the moment on this map where you have actually lost the game. Because once you hit four... You're going to need to be able to shot call, make decisions at a much higher level than you already were. If you never get the other team to four points, game set and match. Don't know who made that call, but it was a good one. I. It's all there is to it. The right play to be made there. Simple, don't overcomplicate it. And that's why I'm honestly so upset about. Let's see here. That far back? No, that's way too far back. It's here we're looking for. Yeah, no, it's actually even further. No, this is no, this is right. So, right here, you should be very attentive of this boss. You should be using this as bait, and you should be desperately ready to make an engage. Not faffing about on a camp. Because you are on a time limit. <sighs> that, and it's a really easy place to do. There's no tank involved in it. You have a numbers advantage. They have a clear thing that they need to hit. And you have a line of engage. It, it, it could have totally changed the outcome of this game. Because if you get those in, you get those kills, you take the fort, it's another three points down, you can probably do the boss yourself, or you can channel that. The timing is unfortunate, but it's workable. It's just, this situation was a disaster. Now, this should not have been a one-for-one. One. It absolutely could have been more. At the very least, you should be able to take this fort for free. And here, I think you could say that our exponent had a chance to deal damage. Well... Those were the two I had. I think I'm definitely going to need to upload this one to YouTube. And if you're anybody on either of these two teams looking to get back into the re replay review, ask any questions about any of my unhinged ramblings, feel free to. I probably will remain available. Anyways... Peace out. I'm going to probably go into in-houses now.